All right, we're back here on Sports Locker Sunday. Anthony Calhoun, Angela Morian, and Andrew Chernoff here as we continue to talk about Purdue uh, geared up for the NCAA tournament. And there's one guy who doesn't want to hear any more about what's happened <laughs> in the past, and yep. that's their head coach and Matt Painter. What I love about Coach Painter though, is that he is just, you know, he's the same way. You know, wins or losses, he keeps everything in perspective. And you got to believe, though, knowing the talent that he has, and you see this draw here, that you're taking any win for granted or any opponent for granted, but – I personally can't think of a better. I mean, you got to find a way to get to Phoenix, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty easy. And I know I shouldn't say that. Knock on wood, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's marble, so that's not wood. That's not going to help us. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, knock on wood after what happened last year. But this seems like, of all the regions, the easiest route to the Final yeah. Four of any of the of region number one seeds that are in this tournament. As you look at Houston and UConn and the other number one seed that I'm forgetting. But it, it doesn't matter because... Grambling State, Montana State should be an easy win. The other side of the bracket, Utah State, TCU, 8-9. Yeah, I would think yeah. it's a pretty easy way to the Sweet 16. Matt Painter, it's not just about getting the first few wins. It's about making it to the Final Four because this is the roster where he needs to be able to do it. And to be able to say, get that monkey off his back, AC and Andrew. Yeah. The monkey off his back. He has this reputation of he can't perform in March. Well, this is the team where you have to perform in March. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and it's, it's one of those things, too. It's, it's weird because Purdue's in the same region as Tennessee, and Rick Barnes sort of has the same thing right now, too. That's right. And he get by there. So you've got two teams that are really just champing at the bit to get to the Final Four. Matt Painter, he knows this is the best team he's ever had at Purdue. He knows the expectation is to get there, but he's focused. I think he's like the guys, even when you talk to him all season long, Forget about last year, but let's also embrace it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has trickled down and changed that whole mentality of the team this year. But they have to at least make a deep run this year, I think, for the general public to change I, I that I totally agree. And, you know, when you look at Purdue, I, I was disappointed when I saw they, they were the third number one overall mm -hmm. seed. I mean, they should have been – I thought they should have been number one when you look at their total body of work. Yes, mm -hmm. I know Connecticut won their postseason tournament. But when you think about the teams that Matt Painter team would up against this year, preseason, I mean, pre-conference, that is non-conference mm -hmm. schedule, and then you look at what they did in the Big Ten, to me, I feel like they should have been the overall number one seed. But that being said – when you look at the talent on this basketball team, you talk about those guards. They've been there now before, if you will. And here's the thing we haven't talked about too much. They're in Indy and they're in Detroit. Regardless of what overall number one seed you are, when you got Indy and you got Detroit, you're going a few hours away up north for the Sweet 16 possibly. Um, it's there. You, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. It's there. And also, you look at the bracket again. Houston is the number two overall number one seed. I think personally that bracket is brutal because there are so many intangibles yeah, there. Yeah. I would rather be the number three overall seed like Purdue. And again, you cannot stress enough the importance of, of being close to home. Okay, let's take a look at those roadblocks here for Purdue here, Angela. And you look at the Sweet 16, if everything goes as planned as far as the seeds live up uh, to their making, if you will, this is what could possibly be in Purdue's way, mm -hmm. if you will, in the Sweet 16. And then, of course, the Elite Eight, you got a possibility of Tennessee and Creighton. And all those games there, from, I think Purdue will still be the favorite in all those games, right? Uh, the only one I have a question about is Tennessee. It depends on which Tennessee team decides to show up. But I agree with you. Kansas, Gonzaga, Creighton, I think those could be a pretty easy win for Purdue if all cylinders are firing correctly for the Boilers. Mm -hmm. Tennessee you mentioned Rick Barnes having that chip on his shoulder about getting far into the tournament as well. Yes, Purdue already beat Tennessee out in Maui Invitational, but that was months ago. The one thing that Purdue doesn't have the advantage, especially in Zaga and Tennessee, they've played each other before. They know what it is to match up against Zach Eady. And that is why these are potential robots. Yeah, and Purdue, but they also know they can beat those teams. And I think that that goes a long way, too. It may have been months ago, but Purdue overall has performed extremely well against the top teams in the country this That's year. Right. And yeah. it's, it's going to, in their mindset, that's giving them that added confidence that it doesn't matter, AC, who they're going to play. They're going to be out there to win. And when you look at Purdue and Purdue's losses this year, these losses have been literally down the stretch, buzzer beaters, if you will, in the last minute, or teams in all those wins have literally played some of the best basketball they've played all mm -hmm. season long. Key for Purdue, and I think the folks who follow the Bulletmakers know this, turnovers is the key here with Purdue because they know when you turn the ball over the way they've, they've mm -hmm. done in these losses, 
you may have a tough night. Only four losses, including that Big Ten tournament loss. Yeah, amazing. All four of those in the tournament. Yeah, that's right. In Matt Painter, the turnover thing, he yeah. mentioned that as soon as they lost <laughs> yesterday, they had yeah. 16 turnovers. He said, we yeah. lose when we turn the ball over between 14 and 17 times. Yeah. So that's something that they need. And that goes back really to guard play. I mean, guard play mm -hmm. there. Uh, the Big Ten tournament happened today in Minneapolis, uh, packed out every, every, every session, right? I'm kidding about that. Uh, <laughs> bring it back to Indy. At the end of the day, though, Please. Uh, it, it was uh, Illinois. Getting the big win. They're going to win the Big Ten uh, Tournament Championship. They get it done today against Wisconsin, who beat Purdue the day before. But it's all Illinois in that second half. They're going to win this against Wisconsin. They get the win. And, of course, they're headed to the NCAA Tournament as well. Let's take a look, if we can, at those teams from the Big Ten that are heading to the NCAA Tournament. And so we got, what, five schools here, Angela? Oh, yeah. Going to, five. I can't uh, count. Yeah, there's, there's five. Yeah, five. yeah. Actually, they're actually well. well Wisconsin, we're, we're Northwest, Wisconsin well, no, Northwest, there. Northwestern's in there. Wisconsin really got six, so it should be Northwestern in there. Northwestern, we got Wisconsin that should be in there. The six teams going to the Big Ten. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, all those four losses that Purdue had, a lot of those were the Big Ten losses against Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska. They're all in the tournament, so. This is going to be a, a tough one, and, but good for Big Ten getting six teams in the bracket. All right, so there you have it there. So those are look at those six teams there in the bracket here uh, for the Big Ten. Not surprised at all. I mean, when you mm -hmm. look at what they've done this year, Michigan State, you know I felt about them. I mean, here they are with 14 losses, and they're going to uh, the NCAA tournament. It seems like they go every, what, over, what, 20-plus years? You can't count years? Out You Hizzo, can't, I know. Can't. But any team that's got 14 losses, <laughs> 14 losses concerns me big time. But, hey, it's Michigan State.